Hello, hello, this is Samara and you are listening to Ascension Messages, where we sit in conversation with benevolent beings who have guidance and support and wisdom for our highest good and collective evolution. This is episode 12, no, not 12, 14. <laughs> episode 14 and today we will be graced with the presence of the Anunnaki um as has been of late in these episodes they just kind of knock on my door when it's time (laughs) sometimes I knock on their door or ask who would like to come but this was definitely you know life was going on and all of a sudden I could not sleep so I did ask for an appropriate time to do this episode but I was definitely visited around 2 a.m. with the message that this needed to be done right away. I have a bit of a sore throat. I'm not sure as to why. Mm. So I'm going to do my best. Um, And there's no no preamble, no warm-up, no message that they gave me beforehand (laughs) we're just winging it today if you are new to my channel welcome if you are returning welcome back um how this podcast works i will be in any one of three states i'll just reiterate that so you will hear either my personality self who is chatting with you right now you may hear from my higher self um or we may hear from the Anunnaki consciousness, either an individual or a collective consciousness, directly through me. Usually it's fairly clear to hear and feel in your spirit which one is speaking. Yeah. So I have, um, there's a great picture or drawing the Anunnaki in Kyle Gray's Gateway of Light Activation Oracle deck. So I have that image in front of me just to anchor because um, the vision I saw in front of my eyes during the meditation was similar to the face in this picture or on this particular Oracle card. And I'm using right now the Alchemy, Wild Unknown Alchemy Oracle deck to guide the reading. It just helps bring it into physical reality um, for me so that I can keep this episode to a lovely earthly 30 minutes or so. (laughs) So I'm going to jump right in. I'm just shuffling and we will see what the messages are today. Okay, so I have three cards. We have Sublimination, which is card 67. Neptune, card 9. That's not a surprise there at all. And card 52, Earth's Heart. Okay. So what message would you like to deliver with these cards here? Okay, I'll start speaking first. Um, from the sublimination card. So the energy that I got from this reading before I even shuffled anything was this bringing of a ha- very high spiritual vibration to the earth. So... 
And often when I do these episodes, I must say that I'll, the topics that they bring to me to speak about are things that are also happening in my personal life, I would say, um, in some way, shape or form and to some degree. This one is speaking of many of us who <sighs> you start to understand that your frequency has always been higher than others. And that is partially why or plays a lot of the role why you haven't fit in with certain people or haven't felt that you fit in at all anywhere. And often what comes from when people don't like you, they blame you. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just human nature, right? What, when we don't like, especially when it's another person, when we don't like another person, you usually are pointing out what it is that that person does, says, how they act, how they behave that makes you not like them. As opposed to us seeing what it is within ourselves, like in within the um, I don't want to use the word constellation, maybe someone can take over for me. A lack of harmony requires two voices. Dissonance requires two voices. There are two vibrations acting in tandem. And so one can intermingle with various vibrations and find various degrees of dissonance or harmony. And when one embodies that wisdom, that knowledge, we then understand that we have the choice to either modulate our own vibration or choose to intermingle with a different frequency. <laughs> and much strife and conflict both internal and external in interpersonal relationships can be more quickly navigated when both parties are holding this knowledge in their awareness. And so when we come back to this card, the sublimination card, card 67, which adds to 13, it has a picture of a, it doesn't look like a dove, although the bird is white. And it's flying upwards in this card. And I feel that this is about seeing, it can be verbalized as seeing from a higher perspective. And understanding that many of the times that people pointed the finger and said that you were this, you were that, they were pointing the finger at themselves. And many of us, at this time we'll find that we are scapegoated 
because people feel uncomfortable in our presence. Um, and this could be for a number of reasons. The underlying reason, though, is that the vibration is uncomfortable for them, especially if they are not actively engaging in their own evolution and ascension. I am, I feel prompted to say we're not making this an us and them. However, many of us need to be freed from the mental and emotional confines that we have in our that we're carrying in our imprint, in our inner child wounding past lives, parallel lives. But specifically, a lot of us in the inner child are carrying this judgment, not fitting in, and it continues to perpetuate and perpetuates and perpetuates um, into adult life. And when I get to this card of number nine, Neptune, many of you are called to your own temple, the temple of your authentic self, the self that you have always known yourself to be. The self that you feel when no one else is around, when no one is reflecting or bouncing off of you their own shadow insecurities. Many of you are here to alchemize energies in your surroundings. But as a product of your sensitivity to all of the energies in your surroundings, you are unclear about the essence of who you are. And the essence of who you are is a beautiful, kind soul who has had many opinions of you placed upon you, imprinted upon your mind. And many of these impressions that have been imprinted upon your mind are that which is needing to be healed inside of those who the those very ones who critique you. It is of utmost importance that you have a practice in which you connect to your energy clearly and directly in silence, in nature, surrounded by only yourself and the earth, the earth which reflects back to you your true essence and your purpose and what and who you were called here to be. So with that message um, that kind of took into, carried over into the last card on the table here, which is Earth's Heart, card 52. Um, I would ask, are there other, for those of us who may have, we feel we have a busy lifestyle and we are challenged to meditate or get out into nature. Um, are there other strategies that you can recommend for our for connecting with 
our true essence, as you called it. The arts are a beautiful way to connect with yourself, journaling, sketching, especially reminiscing on childhood. But we do encourage you to believe that you have the time because you do. The world in which you are attempting to align yourself, fit your spirituality into, this world is created on fear and lack mentality. You are much more supported in your manifestations, in your creations, when you believe that connecting, living your purpose is what you are here to do. And it then is such if you are invited by the earth that the earth will provide for you. But, but that trust in that alignment is necessary. That faith. And many of you have a deep inner knowing that this is the case for you. Because we feel Many of you have said to yourself, why must life be so difficult? Am I doomed? Am I destined to be different, to be, to have difficulties, to not get along with others in the way that I would like to not be intimate with others in the way that I would like. And we say to you that that may have been part of your journey, but that time is coming to an end. You we encourage you to help us help you by believing and shedding the weight, the doubt, the wounds. We need you to believe that life can be easier and lighter. We need you to believe that there are others like you who love at the depths that you love, who are authentic, who live by deep values, who are committed to their personal growth, who see the world in the way that you see and whose vibration matches yours. And in matching, creating harmony with each other, you also support each other in the further increase of vibration. We implore you to believe this. I have a, I was going to pull a tarot deck, but I'm not into that. Um, I'm looking for my unicorn deck. Okay, I'm pulling final oracles. 
I did find the unicorn deck, but I also, when I pulled out the unicorn deck, another one fell on me. <laughs> These are unshakable inner peace, which some of us may need right now. So I'm going to take a couple of these. Since we're only at like the 20 minute mark right now, I'm gonna take a couple of these and then we'll see if the unicorns still want to parlay. After that, so we have card 38. Ooh, yes, card 38, which adds up to 11. And this uh, just sums up, I feel like we're just summing up exactly what we already spoke about. Um, says so card 38 says the collective field is impacting you unseen forces in action how can you relinquish control of the situation that feels blocked Whew. I got a lot to say about that one then we're at card 13 breathe this moment matters most how can you focus on the moment and appreciate that all is well and then card number nine express yourself creatively start something new what creative pursuit do you feel drawn to? So, and at the bottom of the deck, it says nothing real can be threatened. How can you actively participate in creating heaven on earth? So if I were to give this a summary here, the collective field is impacting you, unseen forces in action. This is how the discussion opened that um, a lot of us were not being seen clearly because people were just unable to see past their own stuff and be able to see us. Now, if this, this podcast, if this episode is not resonating with you, then um, maybe another one will. Um, this is certainly a message for, um, light workers, star seeds, earth angels, those who have an innate connection to their higher and or multidimensional self. And likely you've had that from childhood and did not necessarily understand why doesn't everyone feel this way <laughs> so yeah collective field is impacting you and then breathe this moment matters most focusing on the moment and appreciating that all is well this speaks about um and i'm just going to continue they're fine with me i'm just continuing from my own voice at this point, um, I'm very much encouraged to use my throat chakra and just talk about things that I go through but are likely um, being experienced by other people as well. Oh, ruminating, worrying, creating anxiety over situations that you can't really, you, you can't move, right? Because there's multiple people involved. So how can you, how can we find the freedom in knowing that, well, right now in this here and now moment, there is actually nothing wrong. You know, there's nothing you're not standing in a uh, how can I put it? You're not faced with a challenge that is confronting you right now. It may be a bigger challenge, a moment in time, a moment in chapter in life you are moving through. They are encouraging that you connect to the energy as this is falling under the Neptune card as well this card 13 breathe this moment matters most connecting to that higher awareness that all is well 
you are being guided to where you need to be. There is a cycle is ending. Energy is shifting. It may feel chaotic, but you coming back to your center is the most important. It's the point of the shift, right? <laughs> so holding that, you, us, holding that space of that inner internal knowing and internal balance is also our contribution to um, this momentum that is taking place. And then um, coming under Earth's heart, we have express yourself creatively, start something new. What creative pursuit do you feel drawn to? And that is a good way to spend energy in the moment and to release energy from past experiences as well. Anger, um, you know, you can... I'm also getting, I'm seeing that not just creativity, sport, especially if you're dealing with anger, anger, frustration, victimization, um, any of those feelings that make you just, you know, have a mind of their own, have a impulse of their own, you know, running, uh, swimming, boxing, martial arts that all has an effect on moving that energy. We are being asked to alchemize and move the energy. Not it doesn't have to be of the whole world around us because remember, as we began this conversation, the collective field is impacting you. We are processing energy for the collective so our healing is the collective's healing um i forgot to look at the bottom of the alchemy deck they reminded me to the peacock's tail so yes all is going to be well really all is going to be well and um that's card 55 um big change a lot of us are going through big personal transformation Reminder that the bottom of the other deck, the inner um, peace deck, it's card 20, nothing real can be threatened. How can you actively participate in creating heaven on earth? This is reminding us that what is real to us will be real. What is real to us will be real. So if you do feel at peace and are working through stagnant energy processing stagnant energy and knowing that there is the peacock's tail on the other side of this a new life a lighter life a more joyful life and yeah that could mean that none of the friends you have now are going to be your friends when this transformation is this phase of the transformation is complete that can very well be so um you're being asked, we are being asked to ask ourselves, is that going to be a big loss? Not to be cruel to anybody or anything, but we're really called to look into our heart for not just our romantic partner, but also for our family, family members and friends. Who, what quality of relationships do you want to have? What would feel like a balanced and reciprocal relationship to you? And if those relationships you have now do not reflect that, that we are to have the courage to acknowledge that to ourselves and allow the forces of the universe to gift us with energies that are nurturing and supportive of us we are entitled <laughs> to it we are entitled we are worthy it is time i'm going to pull the final unicorn card just because i feel they want to put some icing on the cake thank you very much to the anunnaki who woke me up last night to deliver this message and I have a very definite two cards that flew out. And we have card eight, open to abundance. Did I not? Okay, I'm going to read this to you and then I'm going to tell you that I just said it. Believe you deserve, it says. Did I just say that? 
Yes. Open to abundance. Believe you deserve. Accept plenty and prosperity. This is card number eight. And then card 25, caring community. Participate and belong. Enrich your life. This is directly, you know, I know sometimes I just, it seems like I'm just talking. <laughs> but what I'm saying is very much divinely guided. And thank you to the cards and those that are guiding this message for confirming it with the cards. Abundance is not just money. It also comes in people, the quality of our relationships, the quality of our day-to-day -day lives. And we need to, and it is available to us. It is time for that. We have to we are encouraged to, they like me to say it that way. We are encouraged to, within ourselves, acknowledge and be honest with ourselves about what we define as feeling loved, supported, nurtured, and abundant in this life. And that, that does not reflect that in our lives right now. We should have no fear of letting it go. That is your ascension message for today thank you for sticking around i will see you next time until then take care be well and stay blessed bye for now